Hello and welcome to another Total Education Centre lecture. Today we're going to be talking about Jane Eyre. Now I'd like to start off this series of Jane Eyre lectures talking about the module and the context of Jane Eyre. Of course, Jane is in the critical study and when we think about the critical study often people just turn straight to the critics and that's the worst mistake you can make. With Jane Eyre especially there is a multitude of lots of lots of critical analysis on the internet ranging from the um, quite reasonable to the completely insane and you get caught up in reading every single one of them and you'll be so confused you won't bother anymore. What's really important for this one is to just read a few of them and come up with some of your own ideas. And you know, the, the obvious ones are the Marxist criticisms and especially the feminist criticisms that came out of the 70s. And a lot of these have been adapted to Marxist feminist critiques. There's also psychoanalytic critiques and all, and all the regular sorts of normal criticism and lots of it you'll find on the internet with some very good things. At the um, end of the lecture you'll see where you can get the lecture notes for this which has all the details of all that information for you and our um, notes are available, don't forget, on the website. The critical study, as I said, is very important. It has you need to incorporate your own ideas into it. And you'll see from in those notes that I made up that the examiner's comments are very, very focused towards this. They don't want regurgitation of critics. They want how you saw the text. And it's all right to take these ideas and blend them in, but you really need to formulate your own ideas. So we need to look at what, what are some of these ideas? And, you know, the, the list goes on and on, really, of ideas for Jane Eyre because it's, suffered, it's such a popular novel. It has got a lot of critical analysis about it and many people have seen many things into it. And you need to look at some of these and work out what they are. Some of the things that we sort of came up with were um, a sense of family in the novel, a sense of love, of course, because it's supposed to be a romance novel, but that's another argument. There's sense of independence, of course, religion's mentioned. We talk about social class and, and money and wealth and that sort of thing in that society. And I'll talk about a little bit more of that when I get onto context in a moment. There's also, of course, gender relationships and marriage, and, and the feminists have focused very heavily on that sort of analysis um, on the novel. And you'll, you'll read a lot about that, and I'll tell you a little bit more when I come to look at the critics in another lecture. Of course, the, the sense there's a sense of morality in the novel and, and what we're going to learn and the purpose that Charlotte Bronte had in writing the novel and of course also that sense of ethics that comes through. They're just some of the ideas you might focus on but before you probably even need to do that in, in the sense of, of just investigating the novel slightly for the rubric and the module um, and, and when I talk about the rubric and the module my assumption is that you've gone to the Board of Studies website you've read that information and you know what it's about if not, you can go to those notes um, at our website and you'll find them in there. The, the novel's been called a romance and it does follow a traditional pattern in, in many ways of a romance where you know there's the meeting, the attraction, the problems and then the, the, the final get together in it. And, and I suppose if you loosely look at the plot of Jane Eyre, it is a romance novel and there is romance in it, and people fall in love, and there's, there's the heroine and the hero as such, although there's an argument there as well. But it contains so much more than romance, doesn't it? And when you read Jane Eyre, you're taken away into a lot of different worlds with a lot of different facets in it. And we've looked at the sense of mystery in the novel, for example. Um, the mystery of <coughs> the wife, the upstairs, that's been well and truly discussed, the mad woman in the attic, as they say, and, and that, that also brings other senses of mystery in there when Jane disappears for a while and all those sorts of things. There's of course those gothic elements in the novel and we talk about the, the, the places that she goes and, and, and that sense of the gothic architecture and the gothic happenings and all the, the bleakness and the mystery in that novel as such. There's also fantasy elements in the novel and, and we touch on those as we, as we look at the novel and we look at how Jane gets told fairy stories and she, she, when she sees them coming she imagines and there's lots of fantasy in, and those sorts of imaginings in the novel. It's also been called a very Victorian novel in a style and I'll move on to that in just a second when I talk about context. But before I do that I want to just touch on that autobiographical style that's also been called. And many critics have talked about this is Charlotte Bronte's life and this is, is drags in elements from her life. 
and in many ways this is true. Probably the scenes at, at, at Lowood, the, the school, early on is straight from Charlotte Bronte's experiences and many of the instances and the people in the novel would have been drawn on from her experience. Is it her life story? No, I don't think it is. Um, I don't think anyone can make a case for the fact that it is her life story as such. It's far too melodramatic, um, has far too much additional material thrown in to be anyone's life really. And the sense of coincidence in the novel that you'll need to think about and talk about later also comes into play. We'll touch on melodrama a little bit later. So let's talk about context. Janie has been called a Victorian novel in the true sense, in that it touches on the themes that were important to Victorians. Um, and that's a period in England from, say, 1837 to, to probably about 1901, in the reign of Queen Victoria, which is why it's called the Victorian period. And England was going through a time of great change. It was modernising in many ways. And it, it was a time of peace and prosperity, when England was doing exceptionally well. Um, the colonies, as we see in the text, were bringing great wealth to England. And it was a generally very steady society. And there were some changes in social structure, but not enough. And as we see in the novel and the feminists have picked up, the role of women was very, very estranged from many of the changes that were happening in society. Women were seen as either an ideal or a prostitute. And basically there was, there was very little in between. Women had very few rights. There were some changes that women were able to take up opportunities as um, nurse, nurses and midwives and, and things like that. And as we see in the novel, Jane Eyre um, becomes a tutor. And, and that's, that's one way of, of moving up the social scale. But it was very slim. And women were seen more as the, the I suppose, what you'd call the household general, in fact, the, the little lady that stayed at home and does the housekeeping, looks after everything, makes sure everything's safe so that the man can go off and do what he does. And there was some sense of social reform in Victorian England and, and that, <coughs> sorry, that sense of social reform was starting to move through to women. Um, not necessarily in politics, but there was, there was some change in, in many ways and, and it's, it's, it's in more of a sense of place of contradictions for women. Um, Upper class and middle class women were very, very dependent on marriage, and this didn't change. And, and we can see that in Jane, in um, Jane Eyre, where marrying well and having someone to support you makes your life very simple, and certainly um, was an aim for most women. And we can see that in the novel, and we see that Charlotte Bronte criticizes that in the novel that marriage for the sake of social position and not for love. In many ways, the idea of being a governess was was also a, a way of moving out of social era, as I said. But but really, for the bulk of the Victorian period, married women had very few rights, and, and no, certainly no more rights than their children. Indeed, probably less than their children in many ways. The, rego the law regarded married women as one person. So when a woman married, everything was given over to the husband. A husband was responsible for all the personal property, all the legals, any incomes, and and that was very, very important and very hard on women because it, it didn't allow them to break through. And in many ways it, it, it made them objects to be bought and sold, um, especially with that sense of dowry that came with marriage in those days. The custody of children, of course, was solely with the husband, so women certainly had no rights in that regard, and men certainly dominated. Um, and we see that in the novel, and that's, that's a, a theme that the feminist critics have picked up on, that um, Charlotte Bronte and Jane Eyre certainly wants to have her female characters a little bit stronger and a little bit more independent than that, and Jane Eyre certainly is a prime example of that, although we do see other characters in the novel, and we do see other ones go both ways as well. Some of the women in the text that um, Charlotte Bronte doesn't portray very positively at all, certainly marry for wealth and often that doesn't turn out for the best. As I said, it's very important that you consider the context of, of how Charlotte Bronte wrote this. She wrote about a woman in Jane Eyre who broke free of all these molds and, and, and um, ways of thinking 
and it's very important that, and that's why this novel is so well regarded and so seen as so important, because she certainly broke away from traditions. Not only in the fact that she was a female writer, and she had to write as a male to even get published in the first place, but Jane, Jane Eyre is certainly a very strong character and doesn't fit the traditional Victorian mould. So when we call this a Victorian novel, it is set in context in Victorian, but it is yet very different from that Victorian period. That Victorian period did see eventually in 1894 the, the, the New Marriage Act, but this was much after the novel, and, and we see women in, in, in this novel being treated in many ways as, as, as objects, as I said, and that men seem to think that they control and dominate these women, and we see that with St. John and Jane Eyre, and she rebels against this, and it's very important, and, and that rebellion, and, and the way she conducts herself with strong male figures throughout the novel, is part of that breaking out of that Victorian context that we seem to see. What else do we have in the novel? We talked about, um, in the context, that, that sense of Victorianness, and in, in that context the novel is also very different because in many ways Jane addresses the reader directly at many times, and we see that with a sense in that she's, she's making appeals to the reader at very specific times. And I think we need to note when she makes those appeals, and I've talked about that in the notes and in, in, in later on in, in the next few lectures, that we see that when she does that, she's, she's making a very specific point and drawing our attention to something, and we need to take a note of that as we read. And I'd probably like to mention that, I have mentioned it obviously, in the context. So, so if you haven't read the novel or you're going back through it for the second or third time, you make a note of when those things happen, you'll see they sort of recur more frequently towards the, the back end of the novel and in that last, that last section. We need to think of that Victorian context about marriage. We need to think about the role of women and the position of women. And we need to think about social class. As I said at the start of this lecture, social class and, and material wealth are extremely important. And it, in many ways, a lot of the women strive for that as an end result. Now Jane gets that and she doesn't need to strive for it, although she does have her ups and downs of course and we see her um, first attempt at marriage not go so well, but it, it's a, a very definite thing that, that marriage in that particular period of time was extremely important. And you need to think about that. It's very different from our modern context and some modern readers look at this novel and go, oh, how could you do that? Or, why are they doing that? When in actual fact, the the main focus of it is that Jane Austen, uh, Jane Eyre, allows us to break away from that model. So really, you need to, think, to keep those things in mind when you're when you're reading Jane Eyre. You need to, to keep the, the context in mind and how it's very different from what it is now. And you also need to keep in the back of your mind all those ideas I mentioned in the critics. In the next couple of lectures, we'll look at setting and, and the critical studies and, and we'll focus a little bit more on Jane Eyre. Don't forget, you're watching Total Education. Our website is available. We have notes on our website on Jane Eyre, both extensive teacher's notes and student notes. If you need any additional help, go there. These lectures supplement those notes and we hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget, if, you, if you've had, learned something from this lecture or have any questions, you can press the like button leave a comment, ask a question, we'll get back to you. We hope this helps. Goodbye.